What's up, Hasfit Tribe? It's your personal trainer, Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia, and this is a beginner strength training workout. The only equipment required for today's routine are dumbbells. And we recommend that you have a few different options on hand so that you can mix up the weight depending on the exercise. You may also want to have a chair nearby, but that of course is optional. You can follow along with me for the standard moves. And you can follow me for some modifications. If you're ready to go, let's get started. All right, let's get started with our warm up. First one today is going to be a good morning plus a twist. We're gonna start with our feet, shoulder width apart, hands on our head, little bend in our knees. Now let's hinge at our hips, bring those hips straight back. Feel that stretch in your backside. Now we're gonna twist, bring that right elbow to the ceiling or as close to it as you can. Twist back, stand up straight, squeeze your glutes at the top. We're gonna to repeat. This time, let's twist to the left side. Rotation there, back up. So you'll notice all of our warm up moves today are working multiple planes of movement, as well as warming up multiple muscle groups at the same time, trying to be as efficient as possible, really with our whole workout today. Let's focus on our breathing. Go ahead and breathe in as you come down and out as you come up. Exhale, very good. You can also exhale on the twist. That will be a little bit more of a difficult movement for some of us. That's true. Don't expect to get a lot of range of motion in that rotation, and that's quite all right. Just getting some mobility in our thoracic spine on that one. This one's warming up our hamstrings, glutes, lower back, upper back, even our shoulders a little bit. All right, last one and done very good all right moving into our next we're going to do an arm pullover plus alternating knee raise starting with our hands at our side palms are facing in bringing both arms straight up my right knee up return back down now left knee up alternating right and left knees bring your knee up as high as you feel comfortable in doing so for some of you it'll be all the way up here and some of you might just be here and that's okay and we're going to encourage you to make today's workout your own, adjusting it for your own body, your own needs. Getting a full range of motion with that arm pullover, getting those arms up, feeling that stretch in your shoulders, preparing them for the work that we have coming up today. That's right. It's going to be a good workout today. This stretch is warming up your calves, your quadriceps, hip flexors, core, shoulders, upper back getting our heart rate up a little bit at the same time, warming up our body. Let's do this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, one more warm up move for you here. We're gonna do an arm crossover plus butt kick. Let's bring those arms out to our sides, parallel to the floor. And I'm gonna bring my right heel to my glute at the same time, crossing over my arms, alternating between right and left butt kicks and then alternating which arm is on top for my arm crossovers that's right so we got right on top now left on top opening that chest up nice and big as you are stretching and doing that crossover pulling those elbows and hands back and then bringing that heel as close to your glutes as possible and that's going to be different for everybody working at a pace that you feel comfortable with. Remember, this is just the warm up. Breathe. You got it. Getting yourself in a mental place, ready for the work that we have coming up today. Gonna get stronger. Let's do this one for five seconds. Four, 
three, two, one, zero. Nice job. All right, let's begin our strength portion. We are going to perform this in a superset manner. So we're gonna go back and forth between two complementary exercises here to start. And our first one is a lying narrow chest press. We're gonna need two dumbbells. And if you have varying weights, you'll probably want a heavier weight for this one. But again, this can be totally up to you and your fitness level. We're gonna to move to the floor, lying on our backs with our two dumbbells. We're gonna bring our elbows to our sides palms facing one another, facing in. We're gonna press straight up so our dumbbells finish over our face and then return those dumbbells back down with our elbows in tight to our body. We're gonna do this one for 10 repetitions. Let's do it together. Ready and begin. You have a nice big exhale as you push those weights up overhead. That's it, breathing in as you're lowering those dumbbells. This one's gonna work your chest triceps, shoulders. And with all the moves today, including this one, you're gonna sometimes feel the, the urge to speed it up and go faster. But with strength training, you really need controlled movements, controlled tempo and time under tension. So fight that urge and especially on the way down, control those weights and don't let your arms bounce off the floor. You have three more. Nice, full range of motion. And squeeze the back of your arms, those triceps and chest up at the top. And last one right here. And there's 10. Very good. So as I mentioned, we're doing supersets. So we're going to go back and forth between this move and one that requires us to be up on our feet. So That's come right. on up onto your feet. I am going to use dumbbells for this next one. And I'm actually just going to use body weight but I'm also going to grab my chair. So if you're gonna be using a chair for a little extra balance and support, go ahead and grab it now. We're gonna do a reverse lunge. So um, again, you're gonna choose which one of these movements is most appropriate for you, your fitness and balance level. With good posture, I have my dumbbells at my side. I'm gonna step back with my right foot, drop my knee down until both knees are at a 90 degree angle and re return back up. We're gonna do eight on each leg. Ready and begin. So you decide if you wanna just use body weight, you wanna add dumbbells for extra resistance, or if your balance isn't quite where you want it to be yet, then you can go ahead and grab a chair. That's right. And again, we're dropping down, trying to get as best as we can to a 90 degree angle on both our uh, leg in the front and leg in the back. Yeah, I want an even distribution of your body weight between each legs. Good posture. We'll inhale down and exhale as you come back up to the top of the movement. Not much left here. And eight, last one, very good. Let's go ahead and switch to the opposite side now. That's right, I'm just gonna flip my chair around. Now let's step back with our left leg and begin. Being careful not to bounce that knee off the ground. That's right. I like to say that knee can kiss the floor. That's right, a little gentle tap but don't bounce it. And if you don't quite have the mobility yet to go all the way down and get both knees to a 90, that's all right as well. Do it, go down as far as you can. And if that's here for some of you, that's perfectly okay. Last one right here. And eight. eight. All right, so we're gonna move back to the floor for that lying narrow chest press. And you'll notice when our upper body's working, our legs are resting and vice versa. So that's one of the appeals to this supersetting methodology. So back to the floor, you can mix up your weight if needed. If the, your weight the first time was appropriate, that's good. If you want a heavier, lighter, change it as needed. Elbows are in towards our side and we have 10 repetitions. Ready and begin. Again, breathing in on the way down out on the way up. Full range of motion, don't give a little half reps, but give a full repetition, full effort. Inhale and exhale for six. You got it, staying focused, controlling that lowering phase, what we call the eccentric part of the movement. And last one right here, number 10. 
Excellent, thank you so much. All right, moving back to our feet for that lower body exercise, moving back to our reverse lunge. Okay, if you are using, you, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, if you are using <laughs> dumbbells, make sure that you're using those legs to pick them up and not bending over. That's right, grab your chair if you need. Here we go. All right, we're starting with that right leg for eight repetitions. Good posture, core is tight and engaged and begin step back with that right leg back up this one is working your hamstrings your glutes as well as your quadriceps so really that whole lower body and i don't want you to be loose in your abs while doing this instead keep a tight firm core it'll help you keep good posture help you stay straight up and down and again not a race Last one right here. Last one, all right. Very good. All, all right. right, switching sides now. If you're using dumbbells, you notice you get a little extra credit on your grip. All right, <laughs> eight reps, here we go. Let's begin. And again, just like I was mentioning on that chest press, you gotta focus on slowing it down on both ends of the movement, both the lowering phase, as well as that concentric or raising phase here. All right, here's number five. You have three more reps to go. There you go. Last three of these for the day. Getting stronger with everyone. We can feel it. And last big inhale. Exhale for number eight. Excellent. Okay, so we are going to move on to our second superset. We're only going to need one dumbbell for this next one. And I'm going to get uh, just a little bit lighter for this one. We're going to do a one arm staggered row. What are you gonna do for modification on this one, Claudia? I'm actually just gonna use a lighter weight. So actually I just picked up the one I was using for the chest press, so I'll go just a little lighter on this one. Yeah, so for this one, the move is the same. It's just uh, what makes it easier or harder is the resistance that you choose. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna get into a staggered stance here. Put our opposite hand on our hip, bend in both knees, bend over on a 45 degree angle. My core is tight. Now I'm gonna pull back from this elbow like there's a string attached to that elbow and then lower the dumbbell back down. We're gonna do this one for uh, 10 repetitions on both sides. All right, ready and begin. Again, full range of motion. On this one, try your best to keep your head in line with your spine so we're not looking up like this, but instead that you got a nice straight line going all the way down your back. And again, just making sure that you select the proper weight and that you're not really using any momentum to bring that elbow back and up. The proper weight will mean that the last couple repetitions are a real challenge, but you're still able to do so while keeping proper form. We'll call this one eight. Two more. Nine. Last one. And 10. And your legs might be feeling a little spicy. Oh, very good. After let's, let's, that, turn out, uh, let's turn this over this one. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, this one's giving you a little extra credit on your legs, which is nothing wrong with that. Especially after those lunges. All right, and pull. Again, 10 more now on that left side. Yeah, those. I'm feeling those lunges and I'm feeling it here on this one. It's a very similar stance. Full range of motion. Squeeze that back up at the top. Your lat muscle, just that big back, back muscle right under your arm. You have two more. Nine and 10, very good. Nice work. So I'm gonna grab a second dumbbell for this one. And I'm actually gonna drop my weight and just move to a body weight movement for this one. We're gonna do a dumbbell or without dumbbell, sumo deadlift. So strictly lower body move now. Again, I have the two dumbbells here. I'm gonna go a little wider than shoulder width on my stance, toes pointed out. My hands are hanging right here in front of me. Now my first move is gonna be to break at my hips. So not knees first, hips first, and then followed by my knees, keeping good posture, control the way down, and back up. We're gonna do this one for 10 repetitions. Ooh. Ready <laughs> and <laughs> begin. Again, hips, then knees. We want to keep a nice balance. We don't want to fall back on our heels and we don't want to rock forward on our toes. That's right. Nice, evenly distributed. That's right. I usually like to focus for more of a midfoot feel as yeah. I 
push myself back up. That's a good tip. And if you're struggling with keeping an upright posture on this one, it could be your flexibility needs a little bit of work. That's right. Something to focus on. So maybe you're right here for now. And as you keep working through this workout, you'll get a little deeper. Yeah, that's true. This will help increase your flexibility as well. We'll call this one number eight. A few more. Breathe in, breathe out. Last yeah. one right here. Here's number 10. Excellent. Okay, Ooh, so we're going to go back to that staggered dumbbell row, that upper back movement where we just need the one dumbbell. And again, as you're going through this, if you need to change up your weights yep. in between sets, we encourage you to do so. Make it a little harder, make it a little easier. I didn't feel nearly as much of a challenge on that one, so I'm going to increase my weight just a little bit. Oh, there we go, exhibit A. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the staggered row. Again, staggered stance, right side, bending those knees, back is straight, bend over a 45 degree angle, opposite hand on our hip, and let's begin. Pull back. So almost like you're pulling that dumbbell back to your, uh, your right hip as you pull back from your elbow. That string attached to that elbow. Yeah, keeping our shoulders nice and square. Definitely don't want to turn this into something where you're feeling a twist at the top. Yeah, that's a great point. And if you're having to twist uh, to get it up there, that might be a good indication that you need to lower your weight. And if you get to rep 10 and you don't feel anything, well, that's an indication you need to raise your weight. Here's eight, two more. And last one right here. Excellent. All right, same move, switching sides. Again, getting upper body, lower body, core, all hit here. Right into it, 10 more, and begin. Full range of motion all the way up, all the way down. Squeezing that back up at the top. And when I say at pretend like you have a string attached to that elbow, I say that to mean don't pull back from your hand, but instead pull back like your that elbow is leading the way. That's a good cue to make sure you're using the correct form and you're engaging the right muscles on this. Last one, one right here, number 10. All right, okay, there's so 10. So we're moving back into our last set of that uh, sumo deadlift with or without dumbbells, you decide. I mean, because even without the dumbbells, we just using your body weight is a significant resistance. Absolutely. So again, you decide if it's needed or not. Feet or toes pointed out, good posture, back is straight. And let's do it for 10 reps, let's go. Lower and back up again. Look, how, look at this pace we're going at. Would it be easier to just go down and go up real fast? Of course it would. <laughs> but we're not in it for easy. We're in it for results. We want to make sure that the work that we're putting in is getting you the results that you deserve. That's it. Halfway. Breathing in, breathing out. You keep showing up day in and day out and you will get there. It's a journey, my friends. Breathing in. That's right. Consistency is the name of the game here. That's it. Not perfection. Here's eight, two more. Last two, control it. Trying to get all the way down there to that thigh is parallel to the floor. And 10. Nice work. Moving into our next superset, we're gonna specifically focus on our core and glutes. We are gonna need to move to the floor for this one. No dumbbells or weights needed. We're gonna move into a high plank position from our knees. So I'm gonna come down on my hands and I'm gonna make sure that I bring my hips forward so that my butt isn't in the air. Now with a tight core, I'm gonna step forward with my right hand, step forward with my left, right back, left back. So one, two, three, four. And the modifier for this one is just holding this high plank position from your knees. Just make sure that your wrists are directly underneath your shoulders, keep a nice engaged core and you're good to go. And we got 30 seconds for this one, folks. Ready and begin. So making sure that your abs are tight. That's right. And one way to help accomplish that is actually squeezing your glutes at, as well at the same time. So abs and glutes are tight on this one. And your shoulders are definitely gonna feel the work here. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mine already feeling it as well. 
key is to not hold your breath. Breathe through the entire movement. Great tip. Only a few more seconds. In three, two, one, and time's up. All right. While our abs and shoulders recover, we're gonna move to our backs and do a hip up. I'm gonna grab one dumbbell for this one. And again, I'm gonna just maintain it with a body weight movement here. So lying down on our backs, I'm gonna grab this one dumbbell and actually place it on my hip. So if you are using it, here's your placement. Making sure that your heels are nice and close to your glutes. And I'm gonna drive off my glutes, or I'm sorry, drive off my heels bringing my glutes up, squeezing my glutes for a one 1,000 count up top, and then back down. Doing this one for 10 repetitions, again, under control. Ready, and begin. And for the body weight variation, I like to keep my elbows right next to my body and drive them a little into the ground if it helps you not move around on the ground too much. That's a great tip. As well, keeping those heels close to your glutes especially as you kind of go through it, you might start to slide back. And so all of a sudden, you're not, your feet aren't as close to your, your backside as they should be. So instead, keep them nice and close. Get that one 1,000 squeeze up at the top every time. And really want to engage that backside and those glutes. That's right. Here's number nine. One more to go. Last and one. Big exhale. Number 10. Excellent. All right, so halfway through the superset, we're going back to that high plank position. We're using a dumbbell. You can set it off to the side. Hands are directly underneath your shoulders. Bring those glutes forward. And we got 30 seconds, starting in three, two, one, begin. Abs are tight. And if you want a little extra uh, intensity on this one. Feel free to come up to your feet. Ooh. You decide if that's appropriate for you or if you're cool today hanging out on your knees. That's right. Find a good in between that's acceptable for your fitness level here. You can keep that back straight throughout. Abs are tight. Not too much longer. In five, four, three, two, one, and break. All right. I'm gonna grab my dumbbell. You decide if that's appropriate for you, but we're going right back into those hip ups. And as we mentioned earlier, the appeal of these super sets is while one muscle group is working, the other is resting. So it allows us to keep that pace up. That's right. Heels are nice and close to your glutes. And ready, begin. Driving off those glutes. Good, one 1,000 up at the top. Squeeze them and then control that opening phase. Again, you've heard me say that several times a day and I'm gonna keep reminding you because it's so important. You don't wanna just now allow your backside to flop down to the ground, but control it on the way down. Halfway. This one's working your hamstrings, your glutes, a little bit of core abs in there as well. Excellent. One of the, Two more. Some of the people suffer from lower back pain. One of the best things you can do is get stronger glutes. That's right. Last one, that's number 10. And there's 10, excellent work. All right, let's come to our feet for our last superset of the day. This one actually is gonna have three separate exercises. We need two dumbbells. We're going to perform a dumbbell hammer curl. I'm gonna pick a, pick a weight somewhere in the middle. Yep. And we're gonna do 12 hammer curls. Starting with your hands and dumbbells at your side. You're gonna bring the dumbbells all the way up with your palms facing in until those dumbbells come to your shoulders. And then you guessed it, control the way back down. Keeping those elbows nice and into your body. Yeah, that's right. And your variation for this or modification is just lighter weight. All right, 12 repetitions. Ready and begin. Keep your wrists tight and locked in on this one. I would say don't have spaghetti wrists, right? Where they're kind of going around or they're loose. But instead, keep them tight and locked in. Those palms facing inward. This one's not only working your biceps, but it's working your forearms and your grip as well. That's right. You got a 
I'll start to feel this one probably around, if you're using the appropriate weight, around rep eight, nine, that's when it starts to get, intensity starts to pick up. Halfway through. So that's how you know you chose the appropriate weight. Excellent. Breathing in on the way down. And then exhaling on the way up. My biceps are officially screaming at me. That's what, Feeling rep up. number eight? That's it. Well, there we go. So Ooh. you're right on schedule. Ooh. That's it. Like I said, under control. Had we just been flinging those dumbbells up and down, it sure would be easier, but we're not <laughs> looking for easy. We're looking for results, and we know you are too. All right, almost there. We have one more rep after this one. Here we go, last one. Finish strong, has fit tribe. And there's 12. All right, I'm gonna drop the weight for this next one for sure. Exactly, you took the words right out of my mouth. We are gonna go light. We're gonna do a dumbbell upright external rotation that is a mouthful but for this one we probably the lightest weight that you have and if you don't have a really light weight maybe a couple of water bottles or sometimes just your own body so I was weight just going to suggest sometimes just your own body weight yeah, will, especially at this point in the workout will light you up we're going to bring your elbows up to a 90 degree angle and we got 90 degree angles all over we're going to pull back on those hands keeping our arms parallel to the floor and then return the hands back to parallel. And that's it. We're gonna do this one for 12 repetitions. Ready and begin. Again, another one of those moves that would be so much easier if you could just speed through it. But nope, we're gonna go slow and under control. The goal is nice and healthy shoulders here. That is right. This one's gonna work your, really your, your entire uh, shoulder capsule including your rotator cuffs, including your rear deltoid, even a little bit of upper back and uh, trapezius muscles, just overall shoulder health. Good, help, uh, good to improve your posture. It's hard to talk when my shoulders are burning. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm more than happy to do it for you all. 10 and two more. That's two. Like Don't I said, rush through. Come I on. It does not take a lot of weight on this one. That Last is for one. Certain. Oh my goodness. And 12. All right. Let's let those shoulders rest for a moment. And we're going to move back to our lower body. We're going to do a standing calf raise. So I'm just going to do this one on my own. And I'm going to go ahead and bring out my chair again. Yeah, just for a little added balance. You decide if that's right for you. So standing with good upright posture. I'm gonna drive off the balls of my feet, bringing my heels up off the floor, trying Whoa. not to fall. Whoa, that's what I get for going too slow and exaggerated. I think you need the chair. I, I think we should switch on this one. <laughs> all right, so coming all the way up, squeeze your calves up at the top, and then control that lowering phase. You guessed it. That's it, nice and control on this one. Again, it'd be easy to come up and then come down, right? But that's not how we're, we're gonna see the results we want. So you're gonna squeeze those calf muscles up at the top, Ooh. that's it. Breathing in, breathing out. Again, this one doesn't seem like much, but actually having strong, strong calves is really important for our balance, as well as a lower, um, a lower leg health, preventing uh, ankle sprains. Uh, great for runners and athletes out there. That's number 10, two more. All of the above. You got it, stick with it. Last one and 12. Oh, okay, so we just went through all three exercises in this last superset, and we're gonna go through them one more time, yep. which means we need two dumbbells for our dumbbell hammer curl. And again, you know, whatever weight you chose the first time doesn't mean you have to choose that weight again That's this right. time. You wanna go heavier or lighter? You do what uh, you think is best for your body right now. It's gonna challenge you and give you results. 12 repetitions, <laughs> ready. And let's do it. Again, all the way up, all the way down. Nice and controlled. That's it. It's a good time in the workout to take just a moment to remind yourself what brought you here today. What made you click that play button? Something inspired you, something motivated you. Take a second to think about that, what your goals are. Give yourself some credit for showing up today and taking a step towards those goals. That's right. You know, fitness is like that. You know, you don't, you don't achieve your goals overnight. You gotta show up day in and day out. 
and today you showed up and took one more step up that staircase and I applaud you for it. That's right. We are so proud of you. Here's number eight. That's it. Almost there. Last four. Again, controlling that way down. As we get tired, we want to get, well, for lack of a better word, we want to get lazy. We want to let them drop down, but don't do it. Don't swing either to get those dumbbells up to your shoulders. That's right. Let's dig deep. Come on. And we got what? Last one right here. Right here. Here we go. Number 12. Exhale. Nice work. Excellent. All right, we're moving to Claudia's favorite exercise, uh, dumbbell upright external rotation. Hey, I have a love-hate. Love-hate, yeah. With well, these. You know, they are effective, and you can feel the effectiveness. Light weights on this one. Again, change it up as needed. 12 repetitions. Elbows up. Ready, begin. Again, trying your best to get a full range of motion as you pull back on those hands and just rotating on this one. And if you've had shoulder problems in the past, again, you may not use, you may not need any weight whatsoever, but just because it's uh, uncomfortable doesn't mean it's bad for you. Actually, quite the opposite. Probably gonna have a rehabilitative effect on you. There's a very common, popular exercise that's prescribed by physical therapists all over the world. It's a great exercise to improve that shoulder health. Three more. That's it. <laughs> Not much left. Oh, Come on. You can see We're my face on it. this one. Oh, I know. I'm sure I'm making all types of beautiful, funny faces. <laughs> Last one right here. And there's 12. Excellent job. Okay, we can set those down. And let's move back to our lower body for our last set of calf raises. If you want to add extra resistance on this one, you could grab a couple of dumbbells and hold them to your side as well. Just another option for you. 12 repetitions and begin all the way up and control the way down. Excellent. I love this one because you can really just feel it travel all the way up the back of your leg. At least for me, these calf raises. Yeah, it's, it kind of stretches you out too anytime you take a muscle group to the, the full range of motion like we are on this one. Oh, halfway point. And again, resisting the urge to just drop back down but instead controlling both ends of that move and squeezing those calves up at the top. And you'll know you did this one right tomorrow when your <laughs> calves are tight. Or in the middle of the night when you cramp. Well, hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> Get a banana. 11, one more after this. Here we go. And here is 12. Nice work. Nice job. All right, we have reached the end. Nice work, Claudia. Yes. Ooh, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a pop to a little <laughs> zing. All right, we are going to move into our cool down at this point in time. And we're actually both going to need our chair as we begin to stretch our quadriceps, that big muscle at the front of our leg. But we're going to use our chairs a little bit differently. I'm going to perform a standing one leg quad stretch using this chair for support so I don't fall over. And I'm going to be seated for my quad stretch. So I'm going to, with this chair on my left side, I'm going to grab my right leg. You can grab it from your foot or your ankle. Keep that knee in close to your side, pull back and hold. And as you notice, I moved all the way over to the right side of my chair and I slid my foot back and now my knee is directly underneath my hip. So now I'm just gonna gently come back just a little bit up top and I'm gonna really feel that stretch right here in my quad. Both of these moves are gonna stretch your quadricep. You decide which one is best for you. It's just a static hold or just stretching and holding here and that's it. Nice big deep breaths, helping your heart rate come down after that workout. Holding this one for five, four, three, Two, one, zero, and relax. So same move, we're just moving to the opposite side now. Nothing changes, if you are using a chair, make sure it's a sturdy one. Ready, and begin. If you're doing my variation from the standing, make sure you don't have that leg out to the side, it totally eliminates the stretch, but instead, keep it in as close to you as you can. Absolutely, and that's the same with this one as well. Try not to have your knee flare out, Try to keep it as close to the chair as you can. And if that means that you don't lean your upper body back very much, that's perfectly fine. For some of you, you just may be upright and that's gonna give you all the stretch that you need. And don't be alarmed if one side is tighter than the other. 
That's totally normal. That's why we're doing the stretches. This one's not only stretching your quad, getting some hip flexor stretch in there as well. And all those moves will help to improve your posture and reduce the risk of injury. For three, two, one, zero. All right. So we're going to stretch out our backside with a downward dog. And I'm going to put my chair away. And I'm actually going to continue with my chair here. A couple different variations. I'm going to move to the floor for my variation. So I'm going to squat down, hands on the floor, and then I'm going to come up onto my feet and bring my hips back as I relax my shoulders. You notice for my variation, I have my hands on the top of the chair and I'm going to push my shoulders and my hips away from the chair. So it almost looks like I'm creating a square between the chair, the floor, and myself. And whichever variation you choose, just pretend like somebody's grabbing your hips and they're pulling them back. And you'll feel that stretch down your calves, your hamstrings, which are the back of your legs, glutes, back, shoulders. Like I said, just really hitting your entire posterior chain on this one. It's a really relaxing stretch. Just breathe into it. That's it. Big, deep breaths here. 10 more seconds for five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Relax. I'm going to stay down on the floor here for this next one. And just make sure that you're coming up slowly uh, if you need to. Good point. No race. <laughs> um, we're going to move into a stretch for our hips. It's called the 90-90 hip stretch. Coming onto my backside here, starting with my heels on the floor in this kind of funny position, we are going to rotate to our right side, keeping both knees at a 90 degree angle. And you might immediately be tight here, and if you are, you can take the pressure off by leaning back. Or if you feel good here, you can stay up, feeling that stretch in your hips. Or if it's not enough stretch for you, you can come forward and lean into that lead leg and hold. There are three different variations for you to kind of work through here as we stretch those hips. But regardless of which variation you choose, make sure that both these knees are at 90 degree angles. Big deep breaths. Showing our hips some love with this one. This is probably one of my favorite ones to do. Uh, it's something I have to do often. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time seated at my desk and my hips get tight and my back will start to hurt, but you know, it's not my back that's actually injured. It's my hips that are tight. Um, and I'll do this stretch and immediately get relief. All right, let's come back up into that middle position. Kind of see how we transition back, right? And then now let's rotate to the left side. Same thing, where all of a sudden, if you're getting crampy and it's starting to hurt, whoo, you can lean back. Or if you feel good, good upright posture here. Big deep breaths. And for some extra stretch, feel free to come forward if you need to. That's and totally up to you. That's right. And again, don't be alarmed if one side feels tighter than the other. That is not out of the ordinary. Uh, no, and my left side is tighter than my right right oh, now. Oh yeah, mine too. So again, totally normal. You're in the same boat as us. These modern lifestyles of ours. Oh, I know. Way too much time sitting down, trying to find more activity in our day to day. Big deep breaths. Last five, four, three, two, one, zero. Coming back. And that is it. All right. Feeling good. Feeling loose. Feeling, feeling strong. I was just going to say that. Well, feeling you know, strong. Great, minds, <laughs> great minds think alike. Thank you so much for working out with us today and giving us the opportunity to, to serve you. And did you know that you can get even faster results if you follow a complete exercise program? Those programs can be found on the HasFit app. You can download them onto your Android or iPhone device. You may also find them on HasFit.com. You can also support us by stopping by our store, picking up some HasFit gear like a t-shirt or our diet guide, Eating for Life. Don't forget to like us on your favorite social media network. Until next time, I'm Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia. And we will see you at your next workout.